Hello, mathematicians. Here is review sheet number two for unit seven. In section one, focus on the basic fact. Three times four is 12. And then look at the zeros. There's one on the left, one on the right. Four times seven is 28. One on the left, one on the right. Eight times five is 40. Now that zero is part of the basic fact. So we need one more zero in addition to that. One on the left, one extra one on the right. The second row, 4 times 6 is 24, 2 on the left, 2 on the right. 6 times 5 is 30. Now that 0 is part of the basic fact. We need two more zeros in addition to that. 2 on the left, 2 more on the right. And 24 times 2, that um, is not maybe super basic, but you should know that 24 times 2 is 48, 1 on the left. 1 on the right. And if you didn't, do 24 times 2 off to the side, or 24 plus 24 off to the side. Number 2. 8 times 4 is 32. 8 times 2 is 16. 17, 18, 19. Add 3. 4 times 9 is 36. 4 times 4 is 16, plus 3 is 19. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 1 is 9. 5 times 2 is 10, 5 times 4 is 20, plus 1 is 21, 5 times 6 is 30, plus 2 is 32. Number 3, 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 1 is 2. Now multiply with um, that 1 that's on the bottom, but it's in the tens place, so we need to put a 0 here, and that'll bump everything to the correct place for us. 1 times 4 is 4. 1 times 1 is 1. For our final product. 3 times 6 is 18. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7. 2 times 6 is 12, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. Seven times eight is 56, seven times three is 21, plus five is 26. Two times eight is 16, two times three is six, Plus one is seven. Okay, number four. This is the type of word problem that I often have to read more than once because there's quite a few steps. We can hear the workers out mowing the lawn in front of our school. There are two sections to mow. The first one is 24 feet wide and 49 feet long. The second one is 6 feet wide and 23 feet long. How many square feet of grass do they have to mow in all? So they're giving us the dimensions, which means we need to find the area, and it even uses the word square feet. So I know we're finding area. Let's find the area of the first section, 49 times 24. 4 times 9 is 36. 4 times 4 is 16 plus 3 is 19. 2 times 9 is 18. 2 times 4 is 8, plus 1 more is 9. 9. The second section is 6 feet by 23 feet. So let's find the area of that section of grass. 23 times 6. 6 times 3 is 18. 6 times 2 is 12, plus 1 more is 13. Okay, now the actual question, I'm going to go back and read that, says how many square feet of grass do they have to mow in all? So I need to add the area of the first section and add the area of the second section. One thousand three hundred fourteen square feet. 
So we multiplied and we multiplied, and then because they used the word in all, I knew the final step was an addition step. On to page two. Shade in the bars to show each fraction, and then it's either going to be less than, equal to, or greater than. Five sixths would be five out of the six sections. Two thirds is two out of the three sections. And I can easily see that five sixths is bigger, right? There's more shaded stuff. The next one, four sixths, is four out of the six sections. The second one is three fourths. And I can see that three fourths is bigger. Okay, number six, sketch and name two fractions that are equivalent to two thirds. I know that I can double the top and double the bottom. That's a really easy thing to do. I could also multiply the top by 713 and multiply the bottom by 713, but that seems a little bit ridiculous, especially since we have to draw what we're talking about. So choosing a nice easy number like two is great, two over two. So I'm gonna multiply the top by two and the bottom by two. Okay, so we're going to, um, I think an easy thing to do would be to multiply the numerator by 2 and multiply the denominator by 2, which means we need to double the sections and then also shade in twice as many sections. So instead of shading in 2 out of 3, we're shading in 4 out of 6. And I can see that 2 thirds is exactly the same as 4 sixths. I knew that because I can multiply the top by 2 and the bottom by 2, but I can also tell just by looking at the shaded stuff. The gray shaded stuff looks the same as the blue shaded stuff. Um, maybe multiply the top and bottom by 3. You could also multiply the top and bottom by 4. But if I multiply the top and bottom by 3, that means I need to make each section a third as big, right, or three times as many sections, and then shade in three times as many sections. So instead of two sections, I'm going to shade in six sections. And I know that two-thirds is the same thing as six-ninths. I know that because I could triple the two to get six and triple the three to get nine, but I can also just look at the shaded stuff and I can see that the gray, the blue, and the red are all equivalent. Number seven, rewrite each pair of fractions with a common denominator. You can use the fraction bars to help if you like, but we do have to make them have a common denominator. So I'm going to look at the two denominators. I see a three and a two. And I know I can change those both into a 6. You can also change them both into a 12 and both into a uh, uh, 18, right? Um, but I think 6 is probably the easiest just because it's the smallest. So I'm going to make them both have a denominator of 6. To make a 3 into 6, you have to double it. And if you double the bottom, you better double the top. To make a 2 into 6, you got to triple it. And if you triple the bottom, you better triple the top. So one-third is the same thing as two-sixths, and one-half is the same as three-sixths. Well, three-sixths is definitely bigger, so one-half is bigger. But if I also show it with my picture, that will confirm that what I just did is in fact true, that one-half is bigger than one-third, right? The purple is bigger than the green. Okay, the next one, again, I'm going to look at the denominators. I see a 6 and a 4. You can make a 6 and a 4 into 24, but you can also make a 6 and a 4 into 12. And I think I'll choose the lowest number. That's called um, uh, the least common multiple. Okay, so I'm going to pick a color here. Okay, to make a 6 into 12, i got to double it. And if I double the bottom, I've got to double the top. To make a 4 into 12, i got to triple it. And if I triple the bottom, I better triple the top. And I can see now that the denominators are the same, duh, 4 twelfths is always bigger than 3 twelfths. But I could also prove it with my picture. There's 2 sixths. And there's 1 fourth. And I can indeed see that the blue is bigger than the red. But I could also make the denominators the same, and that also proves it. Okay. Down at the bottom, remember, if one of the numbers goes up to the hundredths place, make them both go up to the hundredths place. And once they do, sometimes thinking about money can be very helpful to kids. It's easy to visualize. So I could think 50 cents versus 5 cents. Um, 
there. Now they both go up to the hundredths place. 30 cents is bigger than 29 cents. And there, 63 cents is bigger than 60 cents. Down at the bottom, remember, if the denominators are not the same, make them the same. If I multiply the top by 10 and the bottom by 10, 2 tenths is the same as 20 hundredths, right? 2 strips is the same as 20 little units. And now it's easy to tell which one's bigger. Again, multiply the top and bottom by 10. 90 hundredths is bigger than 89 hundredths. And the last one, 40 hundredths is bigger than 34 hundredths. On to the last page, Brianna and Lupe each got a strip of fruit leather, like a little piece of fruit by the foot kind of a thing, exactly the same size. Brianna ate four sixths, Lupe ate three fourths. Which girl ate more? Pictures are always quite helpful, but if you are a stinky drawer, sometimes a picture is not enough, especially if the two um, shaded sections are very close. If your picture wasn't perfect, that might throw off your results. One might look bigger, but it might just be because your picture is not quite right. So the first one I'm going to shade in four sixths, and that's going to be for Brianna. And the second one, I need to do three fourths. And that's going to be for Lupe. So Brianna, it says four sixths. Four sixths. And Lupe is three fourths. Now, if my picture is pretty good, I'm thinking that Lupe ate more, right? The green shaded looks bigger than the blue shaded. But I want to be absolutely sure. I don't want to get this problem wrong. So because our picture might not be perfect, and my sections are not totally even. The safest thing to do is think. If the denominators are not the same, make them the same. I see a six and a four, and I know from a previous problem I can make them both into a 12. If I multiply the bottom by two, that will give me 12. And if I multiply the bottom by two, I better multiply the top by two. And I can make a four into 12 by tripling it. If I triple the bottom, I better triple the top. Okay. I can tell that 9 twelfths is bigger than 8 twelfths. So my picture must have been pretty good because my picture supports that. But if your picture is not perfect or it looks, looks just too close to call, make the denominators the same, and then it's very easy to tell which one's bigger. So Lupe's number is bigger. She ate more. Here we go. Okay. Label each of the marked points on the number line with two fractions and two decimals. Again, um, all of these will be exactly the same thing, just different versions or different ways of writing the same number. And if you haven't already told your parents why Mrs. Judson's nickname is Miss Putsy Putz, if you remember the story, um, you should tell them that it happened 34 and a half years ago, but I'm still called Putz every once in a while. Okay, so the first one, I can see that this is one tenth and that's two tenths, right? Or maybe like this, one tenth, two tenths. So I'm going to write down two tenths. And I know that two tenths is the same thing as 20 hundredths. So that's like thinking two strips or another person thinking 20 little units. It's exactly the same thing. Or thinking two dimes and someone else thinking 20 pennies. Exactly the same thing. Let's see, the next one, hmm, one tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five tenths, six tenths, seven tenths. Okay, so the first one is seven tenths. And I know that somebody could also think instead of seven tenths, seven strips, they might say, well, that's the same thing as 70 little units. And those are totally equivalent. They mean the same thing. And 0 0.7, of course, is the same as 0 0.70. All right, down at the bottom, Max says 4 tenths plus 35 hundredths is 39 hundredths. Ari says 4 tenths plus 35 hundredths is 75 hundredths. If you don't know who is correct, you could start with letter B, and you could say, let's see, 4 tenths. If I do 4 tenths, that would be 1 strip, 2 strips, 3 strips, 4 strips, and I need to add another 35 hundredths. So that's adding another 35 little squares. There's 10, there's 20, there's 30, there's 35. And if I look 
at the whole shebang, right? If I look at all of that together, I know that that's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, plus 5 more would be 75. So I know that RE must be correct. You also might think if the denominators are not the same, make them the same. And if you make them both have a denominator of 100, 40 hundredths plus 35 hundredths could never be 39 hundredths, max. 40 hundredths plus 35 hundredths is 75 hundredths. So just like our picture proved it, that proves it as well, that Ari was correct. Okay, here are the answers for page one. And the answers for page two. And the answers for page three. Okay, take the review sheets seriously so everyone does as well as possible on the test. All right, kiddos, I'll see you in class.